The bike is a tremendous device for converting energy from one form to another. So here as I'm pedaling, I'm converting the chemical energy from my breakfast into kinetic energy of my motion. The whole thing is, is what's called a transducer, a device for converting energy from one form to another. Inside the polythene bag, have the... Well, he's an unbelievable professor. And even if you don't like physics, he makes it so that you can go and you can learn and you can enjoy it. I do magnetic resonance imaging is my research, and that's something that only happened by accident. Um, I, I did my undergraduate degree at the University of Cambridge and accidentally met my PhD supervisor there, accidentally got into his research area. And I'm very lucky because physics kind of suits the way I prefer to learn, I guess because I, I'm very interested in, in visual demonstrations. I'm quite a visual learner, so I like to see visual demonstrations. I like to see stuff happening. Physics is really well suited to that, and I try and transfer that into the classroom. You often feel diluted as a student in the crowd of the lecture theater, but in some way, he was capable of making us feel like we were learning as if we were a small group of students. Traditional lecture style teaching doesn't help most people. Most people really struggle to pick up lots of material in a, in a traditional physics lecture. People around me didn't like physics, it wasn't their strong, <laughs> their strong suit, but everyone liked to go into class because he was so energetic, super passionate, um, and really approachable too. Uh, he held tutorials and he was literally just jumping around and helping as many people as possible uh, and open to all the crazy questions you had. He would always do his best to answer and help you as much as possible. You have to be very careful about how you introduce demonstrations in the classroom. You have to make sure that the students are invested in the outcome. One particular thing that stood out in my mind was the day that we learned about refraction and when light travels in one media to another. Say like water for example and water will slow light down so the, the light will bend. And Ben actually had students in the class, about 10 of them, stand in a line like if they were a marching band and walk as if they're a ray of light and travel into a new media. The way we tend to work in my class, for practicality's sake, where you've got a, a big first year class, we have uh, colored answer cards um, and the, we set up the demonstration. We talk about what might happen. Um, we, we might even run one demonstration with one outcome and change something and then ask everybody to predict what is going to happen. Everybody votes with the cards, then we run the demonstration again. And then we'll have a whole discussion about why the outcome might be the way it, way it is. And we try and come to some consensus so that everybody in the class has agreed that they understand the physics concepts behind why the particular demonstration might work. One of my favorite interactions is bringing undergraduates down to the UNBMRI center where we do uh, research into magnetic resonance imaging. The physics department here is a sufficiently small size that actually um, we can combine the research and the teaching activities which is a really nice, a nice finesse. But also the research informs what you say in the classroom and informs how you set up demonstrations and things like this. So there's lots of stuff I teach even in first year that are actually very closely connected to my research area. <laughs> I started teaching after I have been in his class, even though it was a lecture, I use it in school all the time. The exciting music is a great way to start class, and Ben, that was his idea. Looking things up, I'd found a video, you know, I was like, well, you know, I sent it to him. I don't think I do that with a lot of profs, but I knew that he'd think that's really cool. Um, and he emailed me back and he was really excited about it and he sent me a YouTube video of you know, springs oscillating at different speeds and how you know, one spring over here will affect a string, spring over here if they're attached and, you know, and this is in one of my other courses so if you're interested. You know, it was kind of that personal touch. And it'll come to a complete halt just there and after that it'll start moving again. Cool, and it'll get quite bouncy. <laughs>